I have a huge toy collection, <laughs> so I've, the hard thing is convincing my wife that it's, that's part <laughs> of the job. <laughs> If you've grown up loving Toy Story characters, what do you think that says about you? <laughs> These films are all about uh, Woody and his relationships with what are essentially his family. I think people relate to that because they see themselves in these characters. They're, they're so clearly defined from the very beginning. Uh, and I think um, they're, they're very universal in that sense. Each film, you've had the advantage of better technology, but tried to have little effect on the characters. Why do you think it's important to keep them untouched? Yeah, you know, I mean, we want them to look untouched. We want them to feel exactly like the characters that you remember when you're picturing in your mind's eye yeah. what the earlier films looked like. But we also have this new technology that we had to use. And it's in, in the last nine years, it's developed enough that we had to go back in and recreate the characters. We did need to reshade them and, and, and do rework right. some of their articulation. So while they look the way they, they used to, we, we did have to bring them into the new technology. You had a special team redesign Bo Peep. What difference did a whole team working on one character make? Yeah. Man, it made, it made a massive difference with Bo Peep. Yeah, they called themselves Team Bo, and it was made up of story people and animators and, and artists and, and character designers yeah. and cloth people. They, they really invested a lot of time into her. First of all, just wanting to be true to, to her materials. She's porcelain, but also kind of making her this adventurous spirit that we were kind of shaping her character into. They, they were the ones that kind of helped find a way to recraft her look, where it's kind of she's repurposing the outfit that we know her from in the first films, and she's ripped it, torn it, made it into a cape, and, and, and is now kind of living this adventurous life and thriving out there. And, and I really think from story all the way to her look, mm -hmm. there was a lot of influence from the crew and Team Bo. The new character Forky is not manufactured but made out of junk. <laughs> is the animation different to the other toys? Was it harder? Yeah, we wanted to make sure that he moved differently from everybody else. So the other characters have very kind of smooth movements to him, but his are very rigid and kind of almost like a, a baby deer being born or something that can't really get its balance yet. So we made sure to make his animation kind of worse. <laughs> as clumsy as a spork is. Exactly, yeah. yeah. The ventriloquist dummies are terrifying in the film. <laughs> How did you make them so creepy? It, it wasn't very hard. All you had to do, <laughs> people are uh, scared of, of ventriloquist dummies. The reason they're in there is we went to, and did so much research on this film. We went to a lot of antique stores. Every single one of them had a dummy in the corner just kind of staring at you. And, uh, and I had a dummy when I was a kid, so it was like, we need to, we yeah. need to put them in there. <laughs> If you were a kid and you're at a Second Chance Antique Store and you saw all of the Toy Story gang, what would you spend your pocket money on? All of it. <laughs> I've done it many times. I've, I have a huge toy collection, so I've. The hard thing is convincing my wife that it's that's part of the job. <laughs> it's finished now. You got you got to make a fifth. <laughs> no, I was just. It was all about figuring out number four mm -hmm. and making sure that it felt like this is a. a a part of Woody's arc in a way that concludes it in a way that's satisfying. So we learn in the film that there was over 30 years of Woody's life before Andy. Do you know what he was up to or if we'll ever see it? Woody's never told us that. <laughs> yeah, I've asked him before and he really doesn't like to talk about it. <laughs> no, you know, it's it, yeah, there's this great implied history to Woody. He's from the 1950s. Um, and the, the point of it story-wise is that he's had this great tenure. He's done everything right and he's always been played with and cared for and he's, he's kind of thrived all these years. But yeah, it is a little bit of a mystery. We're not really sure. We just know it's, it's been good and he's where, you know, he was where he needed to be for Toy Story 1 and at a point in 4 where he really, we could really change him. And uh, one last question. Yes. If you were a kid at the second-hand antique store and you saw all the Toy Story gang, what would you spend your pocket money on? Oh, good question. If they were all there? Yeah. Um, I've got to go do Kaboom. I mean, I know yeah, he can't live up I to the know. commercial, but I would want to spend a lot of time trying to see <laughs> if I could get him to jump properly. He's pretty cool. I mean, if they're all there, I, I would see Woody. I think it would be Woody. I would spend my, my He's money on Woody. He's a classic. Yeah. yeah.